We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Monday. We start out another week. We don't have a trial to look forward to, not in the near future. The trial in the Manhattan District is over. And of course, you know that Donald Trump was convicted of 34 felonies. Now, this has been interesting to see how the Republicans and Donald Trump have reacted. Republicans are on a revenge trip trying to get back at the Democrats and at Joe Biden because their Lord and Savior was convicted 34 times. None of these things are going to work. None of them ever work. This is what they always do. They try to get revenge. But they aren't the brightest crowd of people, and it won't work. And it won't change anything either. Donald Trump's convictions are there, and yes, he may appeal them. It's unlikely that he'll get them reversed. And even if he does get some kind of help with the appeal, it's years down the line. We're using Donald Trump's strategy against him. Biden, our t- biding our time. The thing is, is we want to get this beyond the election, and it will certainly do that. The other trials will probably come after the election, too. At least we think so. There might be one that pops up, maybe Georgia or something like that, depending on how things go. Uh, But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because since those convictions came in, Donald Trump has clearly been losing it. He gave a speech uh, after the convictions were announced, and he just seemed a little out of it. He didn't seem to have the same uh, energy. He seemed to be a little resigned to the fact that he's convicted, and God knows what they're going to sentence him to. Interesting thing about the sentencing, everybody is talking about, well, he may not go to jail. Well, he may go to jail. That's a real possibility given all the circumstances of this case. Donald Trump has no remorse. That comes into play when Judge uh, Marchand decides. Uh, Could he be a recidivist? Could he do it again? Well, certainly he could. He says he would. So, As much as a lot of people say he's not going to jail, they don't know. I don't know. I think he's got as good a chance of going to jail as not going to jail. But if he doesn't go to jail, he'll be on probation or something like that or house locked, home lockdown. And either way, he will be limited in what he can do and how he can move. And he's not going to like this a bit. He's going to hate it. And it's certainly not going to help him as he's... um, heading toward the election day in November. None of this is good for Donald Trump. In spite of what Republicans say, what Donald Trump might say, they are currently drowning. Just let's watch. It's going to get worse and worse over time. All right. To start things off, we have some emails. First one comes from a a woman by the name of Susan. She says, hi, Mike, keep up the good work. Have you heard the latest? Marjorie Taylor Greene claims to be pregnant by none other than Dirty Diaper Donnie. Susan, I've not heard that. I'd be surprised if she was actually saying that. Well, maybe I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, For Susan and me, I want to apologize for those uh, people who have just eaten or are sitting down to eat as they're listening to this podcast. The imagery she created in this one a little sickening. <laughs> no, I haven't heard that, Susan. I, I I don't know if that would be um, even something that would come out of Marjorie Taylor Greene's mouth. She's crazy. She's stupid. But that might be a little too far for her to uh, for her to uh, suggest. And I got to think Donald Trump might have something to say about it too. We'll we'll see. <laughs> Wow, that would be weird, wouldn't it? If she was, in fact, pregnant with Donald Trump's um, baby. But listen, Donald Trump is going to be 78 years old. We've heard about his sexual prowess from Stormy Daniels. Do you really think he's capable? I don't know. I wouldn't bet on him for a minute. All right, the next email starts out. Hi, Mike. I have some questions about the Florida stolen documents case where Trump is accused of violating the Espionage Act. Maybe you or some of your followers or a legal brain can shed some light on it for me. 
I see a lot of problems with the prosecution of this case, mostly related to the evidence. We know that there were documents of all levels of classification from confidential to top secret and beyond to some that could only be viewed in secure facilities. Unless they have top secret clearances, the lawyers, the jury, and even the judge cannot see those documents except from a distance. They certainly can't read them. Getting a top secure, a top secret clearance is no easy task. It takes some time, and I doubt if any of the Trump's sleazy lawyers could get one. When Trump was president, none of his kids could pass the FBI background check for even a low-level clearance. I can see grounds for a mistrial already. We are unable to provide a competent defense because we are not allowed to examine the evidence. It concerns me because I consider the documents case to be the most serious of his crimes and the most likely to carry a harsh sentence. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks, Scott from Redneck County, Pennsylvania. Well, I I know that question has been considered by the prosecution. I have to believe there is some uh, um, workarounds in that situation, because if there weren't, nobody who's ever been prosecuted for having top secret documents would have been convicted. Nobody because they would have run into the very same problems. Um, I think that if that were a huge issue and if if uh, Jack Smith hadn't figured that out, I think we'd be in a much different situation in Florida. I don't know the answer to it. I understand your point, but I would think it would be an issue by now if that were something serious to consider. You're absolutely right in as far as... Um, people seeing this. And and part of the reason why uh, the defense team wanted to uh, delay things is to get somebody on their staff who has a uh, security level high enough to read it. I don't know how this has all played out. This whole thing's been on hold for a while. <clears throat> I think before we worry about that part of the defense or the prosecution, we need to deal with the, the judge, get her out of the way. And until that happens, nothing else is going to happen. So it's It's not even an issue to address because we've got a bigger one, whether the judge will actually let them carry on with the case. They're going to have to get rid of her. And I think at that point, then there'll be um, some announcement as to how they will work around that. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate the email from Scott from Redneck County, Pennsylvania. All right, the next one starts out. Hi, Boomer. Blue Dot in South Jersey here. I need a lifeboat. I'm drowning in all the MAGA tears in my area. Not my own, of course, but all the cult members in Cape May County. They are spewing nonsense about how the trial was rigged. The judge and jury were too woke, and they are repeating all the right-wing media bullshit. It's hilarious. Since they're losing so much, they are screaming that this conviction of 34 felony counts will open up a can of worms. His fundraising has skyrocketed. I think it's so cute how they think any of that money is going to any Trumplican campaign, let alone the con- convicted felons. Eugene Carroll should open up a direct deposit account from the fundraising directly to her bank account. Voting in a primary on Tuesday. Can't wait. Thanks for your comforting words. Blue Dot in South Jersey. Yeah, they're going to say a lot of things. They're going to say, well, now that they convicted him, that guarantees his win in November, which is just bullshit that they're spewing. I know I don't believe much in polls, but they do. And some new polls came out that said that after the conviction, there are 49% of independents that just cannot stomach voting for Donald Trump. There's also a report of anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of Republicans who have said they will not vote for Donald Trump after being convicted. Now, that 10 or 15 percent for the Republicans may sound like a small amount to you, and it is relatively small in comparison. But here's what you have to understand. In order for Donald Trump or any Republican to win the presidency, they have to have a unified party. At the very least, they need their entire party unified and voting for Donald Trump. Donald Trump does not have that. 
we know at least 10 to 15 percent of the people do not want to vote for him. And there's probably more than that. If he cannot unify the party, and he certainly can because it's chopped up in like three different sections. You got MAGA, you got the almost MAGA, and then you got the relatively normal people. If they all are looking at different ways to vote, there's no way he can win. Now, I want to bring up the fundraising thing. And I'm going to shame you folks a little bit because he's stating, the Trump campaign is stating that after the conviction, he raised $50 million. Interesting number, isn't that? $50 million. And some of you, including you, uh, Blue Dot, seem to believe that number. Let me remind you of something. Remember when Joe Biden had an exceptional fundraising day where he raised $25 million and it was thought to be a record? Remember that? Well, within a couple of days later, Donald Trump had a fundraising event. There was like 33 people there. And he claimed that he raised $50 million, breaking the record. Wow, that's cool. That's amazing. It's even more amazing that he's having so much trouble fundraising and he's only raised half as much as Joe Biden. So what are the odds he would get $50 million in that fundraising event? Well, at first, people like you and I and everybody else believed it. Well, it must be true. They said it. But then when it came to the end of the month and the FEC filed the report or published the report, turned out he didn't raise $50 million. He had a bunch of people promising to give him money at some point, but he never raised $50 million. So those people that thought it was true were fooled. And now he does it again. He gets convicted of a crime. Surprise, surprise. They've got fundraisers because of that conviction. And granted, there will be people that will come out and pay money. But frankly, he's draining his base dry at this point. But he comes out and what's he say? We raised $50 million and all the Trump folks are so proud and so excited about that. But they were proud and excited about the last one that wasn't true. So what makes you think this number is true? You know what? We will find out if it's true or not. Again, at the end of the month, we'll have an FEC report and it will tell us how much, in fact, he raised. And I'm telling you right now, I don't think he raised any more than he did in the last time he said he broke the record. He just says it to change people's minds and get in people's heads and hope they forget about it. And hopefully the news story about how much he actually raised doesn't get as much traction. Don't buy into the bullshit. Donald Trump is having a hell of a time fundraising. And in spite of the fact that he was um, convicted, I don't think he got $50 million. And even if he does, like you say, it's all going to go to legal fees. He spent a $90,000 a day. So it doesn't do any good for him to raise money at this point for the campaign. All it does is to keep his head above water when it comes to his legal fees. But just because he said it, you should know better by now. He's a pathological liar. He's done this before. Did he really get $50 million? Did the uh, uh, Trump page really crash? Well, it may have crashed, but a lot of people that weren't necessarily donors probably went to the site too. So take that for what it's worth. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't buy that he collected $50 million. And toward the end of the month, we'll find out if it's true. And I'm guessing I'm probably right. All right. Next one says, finally, call a spade a spade, a Trump a Trump, an a-hole an a-hole, though the last two are synonymous. After Trump's last courthouse speech in the Biden campaign released a statement titled 34 Highlights from Convicted Felon Donald Trump's Press Conference, Unhin and they crossed that out and said unhinged speech. Now, the thrust of it was to list 34 points Trump made in his spiel with the Biden campaign's retort. I urge any reporter, news agency, anchor, etc., to cease calling him president, former president, twice disgraced Donald Trump, and call him by his new public persona. Convicted felon, Donald Trump. 
From this point forward, do as Trump admits to doing, repeat it over and over again at the start of each story. Only in this case, it's the truth. Thanks, Paul. You're absolutely right, Paul. Kind of goes back to what I said about him claiming these big numbers in fundraising. He says it over and over and over and over again. And people believe it. They fucking believe it. I was talking to somebody who um, had a conversation with a um, with a Trumplefuck. And this Trumplefuck had the audacity to tell this normal guy that he was worried about Biden winning because he heard that Biden was going to take away Social Security and Medicare, and he needs it to survive. That's what he said. That's what he actually believes. And he supports Donald Trump. Well, of course, the normal person said that's not true. Here's what the deal is. And the guy refused to believe it. We can't help motherfuckers if they can't help themselves. All right. The next one says, hi, Boomer. When I hear these Republicans suggest that Biden should pardon Trump, all I can say is, please, motherfucker. <laughs> How do you pardon a guy that never stops committing crimes? His 2016 campaign slogan was lock her up. His 2024 campaign slogan is retribution. Yeah, I told you about Dean Phillips, who is a Democrat, who's my representative, is sending notes to Kathy Hochul to pardon Donald Trump. I can't even possibly agree, understand how he can do something like that. But the premise for what they're doing is, well, it'll just be better for the country. It will allow the country to heal. That's the same bullshit they told us when um, Jerry Ford pardoned Richard Nixon. What we found out after he pardoned Richard Nixon is that's not true. And to be perfectly honest with you, in this case with Donald Trump, I think there would be more divisiveness, more conflict, more blowback if you did pardon Donald Trump. It's not going to make things easier. You have to understand back then, Republicans and Democrats have different points of view, but they were nowhere nearly as divided as they are now. This division, if you let Donald Trump off the hook, it's going to cause a lot of Democrats to be pissed off. And this country is going to be worse off if you do that than if you convict him and prosecute him and put him in jail. There are a lot of people out there expecting accountability, something they haven't seen with Donald Trump since he emerged into the political scene. You take that away from them and you don't hold him accountable. There's going to be far more trouble than if you put him in jail. Now, the email continues on. The motherfucker would literally be tweeting some disparaging shit about Biden from the ceremony where he was being pardoned. He'd immediately leave and go to the microphones outside and accuse Biden of a crime. Hell, while Barr was misrepresenting the Mueller report, Trump was literally on the phone shaking down Zelensky. Boom, he's the kind of guy you could show mercy in a fight, have him immobilized and tell him, I'm going to let you up just to shut up and walk away. And he'd throw a rock at the back of your head walking away. He's that kind of pussy. I agree. You got to put him down, put him down permanently. No, fuck that. Fuck him and fuck you too. You Republicans lost the rights to a suggestion like that by consistently being honorless pricks. Thank you for what you do, Boomer. Best garage door, Jeff. P.S. If little Mikey Johnson keeps misbehaving, should Akeem go have lunch with Margie and, and say, let's run that back. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, as we get closer to the election, if we uh, kick his ass out, that, that, that would be just desserts. You know, it, it's funny. The Democrats saved Mike Johnson and the moment he was saved by them, he was talking shit about the Democrats and he continues to talk shit about the Democrats and trying to harm the Democrats. So you might be onto something here as we get closer to the election. And since the house isn't going to do anything anyway, why not just dump that fucker on his ass, embarrass the shit out of him. And then he'll come begging back to the Democrats. And, you know, as my dad once told me, when you got him down on the ground, kick him in the teeth. <laughs> well, my dad was a sensitive, compassionate guy. Uh, but, yeah, maybe Mike Johnson needs a lesson. And uh, I'm all about seeing him getting a lesson. 
All right. Former President Donald Trump, convicted felon, of course, suggested that jail sentence would be a breaking point that leads to violence from his supporters. See what he's doing there? Trying to incite violence again. If they dare put me in jail, you guys better rise up and kick back. Funny thing is, is he's tried that before when he was indicted, when he went on trial, and then when he was convicted. He tried to incite them too, but guess what? Nobody fucking showed up. Not a soul. Well, maybe a few people, but none of them dangerous. So now he keeps pushing the goalposts back and he says, well, if you put me in jail, then there's going to be trouble. No, there's not going to be trouble. If there was going to be trouble, it would have been done by now. The Republicans or the Trump fucks have been making all kinds of threats, but that's all they're good at. They're bullies. Threats are what they count on. If they get pushed back or people stand up to them, they run like little pussy ass bitches. So, yeah, he's he, he's trying but he is so much weaker than he was in 2020. He just can't pull it off. And the circumstances are different. He's not the president. He doesn't have any power or control, but Joe Biden does. So do you think the Trump fucks really want to run up against that? Now, they're not too smart, and you think they might, but the fact of the matter is, is that's not going to happen. Now, Trump made remarks during a Fox News interview aired Sunday. The legal maze that you're still facing and that they could, could the judge decide to say house arrest or even jail, it could be faced. Fox News host Pete Hegseth told the former president. Trump said, I saw one of my lawyers the other day on television saying, oh, no, you don't want to do that to the press. I said, don't you don't beg for anything, Trump recalled. That could happen, he added, speaking of jail. I don't know that the public would stand it, you know. I don't. I'm not sure the public um, would stand for it with what I think I, I think would be tough for the public to take. You know at a certain point there's a breaking point. Well, that may have been the case at one time. But the fact of the matter is, is you can't draw flies at this point. Your rallies are going down. You can't afford rallies. Nobody's showing up at the court. You may want to think that the vast majority of people support you, but you're delusional. That's not the case. Maybe a small percentage, 25, 30% of the country or just the Republican Party, they support you, but they have no balls. They have no courage. They're not going to come out and fight for you. They tried that once, and we got a shitload of them already in jail. The tough ones, the mean ones, are probably in jail. All you got left is a little cowardly mama's boys that aren't going to do anything. They're going to talk a big game, but they aren't going to do jack shit. Now, Donald Trump is clearly in desperation mode, and he's reaching out everywhere, anywhere, anyhow. Trump Sunday made it clear that he wants the Supreme Court to intervene in the former president's upcoming sentence for 34 criminal convictions for business records in New York. I've heard people talk about this. I've heard people worried about it. Here's the deal. This is a state trial. The Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over it. None. Now, that's not to say it couldn't get to the Supreme Court. But it's quite a long shot, and uh, I don't think there's any evidence to support it. The one way it would get to the Supreme Court is if they found something in the court case that was against the Constitution. And then they could give it reason to rise it up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court can do whatever they like. But what you need to understand is before that would ever even come close to the Supreme Court, they'd have to go through the appellate process in New York. The appellate court, the Supreme Court, and this could take years, certainly well past the election. Now, once the election is over and Donald Trump has lost, he's going to lose a lot of support, a lot of power, a lot of protection. If they still want to try to overturn it after uh, the election, well, they're going to have a hard time of it. I suspect that Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to do some things to fix the Supreme Court so that we don't have the corrupt criminals that we have in there now, at least not with as much power as they once had. They could possibly try to stack the court. 
So people worried about the Supreme Court coming in and, and saving Donald Trump's life. It's not going to happen, not for the foreseeable future. And this this is the thing that bothers me so much is that Republicans will come back with some crazy fucking scheme to get Donald Trump out. It never works. They failed every time. But what bothers me is I get Democrats coming to me saying, oh, I'm worried about this. What's going to happen? Well, what's happened every other motherfucking time? These people are grasping at straws. It doesn't work. They fail constantly. Why are you worried about this shit? It's not going to get to the Supreme Court. And even if he did, it's three or four years down the line. Donald Trump may not even be fucking with us anymore. He certainly won't be in any kind of power. And as I've said, if these, if he really wants these cases to go after the uh, election, cool. He thinks he's going to win. He's not going to win. And when he doesn't win, he has zero protection. Nobody covering his ass. He won't have Congress fighting for him. He won't have anybody fighting for him. So he's going to be his most vulnerable after the election. And um, I'm fine with those trials coming after the election. The fact that we have 34 felony charges, this is enough to throw Donald Trump into a tailspin. Now, um, <laughs> Trump complained the sentencing for not having done anything wrong will be conveniently for the fascist. Four days before the Republican National Convention, Trump complained before claiming the entire judicial system was rigged against him. This is what he said. A radical left soros back DA who ran on a platform of I will get Trump reporting to an acting local judge appointed by the Democrats who is highly conflicted will make a decision which will determine the future of our nation. The United States Supreme Court must decide. It's not their decision to make. Politico senior legal affairs reporter Kyle Cheney flagged the statement by the ex-president. Trump makes it explicit he wants the U.S. Supreme Court to somehow prevent his sentencing in New York. But he can't. He certainly can't do it today. And if there's any hope, any remote chance he could even see that as a possibility, we're talking about years down the line. That will be well after Donald Trump's expiration date, whether it be mortal or whether it be political. Donald Trump will be a non-entity, irrelevant, inconsequential by the time something like that would ever occur. So let them talk all they want. It's not going to work. It's not a thing. And Donald Trump is just delusional. You should be used to this by now. We've heard it over and over again. He gets he loses the election in 2020. What's the first thing they say? Oh, he won. It was a hoax. It was rigged. It was fixed. Donald Trump will be back in the Oval, House, Oval Office with John Kennedy Jr. in August after the November uh, election. Well, that never happened. We kept hearing about how Donald Trump was going to bring down the uh, pedophiles in the Democratic Party. Never happened. They kept saying and pushing back the goalposts, saying he's going to be in the Oval Office again. It's never happened. These people say the most outrageous shit, and people believe it. Now, I can understand the Republicans. I can understand the trump fuck standing behind what he says. But Democrats, for fuck's sake, learn a lesson. We've heard these things over and over again. And then he gets to this point and says he's going to get the Supreme Court to overturn it. And here's what we got. People on the Democratic side worried about that. Why are you worried? Fuck's sake. It's not going to work. It never worked before, and it's not going to work this time. Donald Trump is flailing. He's drowning. And he will do anything and say anything in order to save his life. So don't be worried about this shit. Donald Trump has nothing the Republicans have nothing, and soon they won't even have a slim majority in the House. So they can scream and whine all they want, but do not believe the bullshit they say. That's the one thing that causes the most anxiety and stress in Democrats. They believe what Republicans say, and for fuck's sake, would you stop? Learn a fucking lesson. 
take a look at what you've dealt with up to this point and tell me how many times they've been right. How many times their threats have come through. I'll tell you, fucking never. Fucking never. So if you believe this shit, you're fooling yourself. You're doing yourself a disservice. So just fucking stop. All right. We are going to take a quick break and we will be right back. So did you hear the news, the exciting news? Donald Trump is on TikTok. That's weird. Why would he be on TikTok? Wasn't it the Republicans that are saying that uh, the Chinese are trying to infiltrate and steal information? Donald Trump did start to side with um, TikTok when he talked to the uh, CEO of TikTok. I'm sure they probably decided to give him some money or something, and he was thinking they're now his buddies. But he's on TikTok. Now, what you have to understand about Donald Trump being on TikTok, Donald Trump really isn't on TikTok. It's his staff basically taking videos, sections of videos that he's done, and putting them on TikTok. Now, I will say he got some attention. I don't know how much of it's legitimate, how much of it's bots. But I, when I checked it earlier today or earlier yesterday, he had one video, the announcement video that he would be on, on TikTok, and he had 1.8 million followers. I'm not. I'm guessing that's probably not all Trump Lafox. The other interesting thing is I was listening to um, Hawk on TikTok, and his brother Falcon had been uh, going through some of the comments on Donald Trump's first video. Interesting thing about it is there wasn't one negative comment, all positive comments. Isn't that weird? So are they going through all the comments and deleting all the negative comments? Possibly. Possibly. That sounds like something Donald Trump would do. But people are naturally going to be interested in what's going on on Donald Trump's page. And I'm guessing probably not a lot. They're going to throw some things up there and they're going to um, hope to get some traction. But for the people that are intrigued by this, that are Democrats, I want to give you a warning. There's two things that Donald Trump is trying to do. He's trying to reach the younger people. Yeah, Donnie's all about the young people. He's trying to reach the younger people and he's no doubt monetizing uh, TikTok. With 1.8 million followers, and he does some videos that do well, he's going to get paid some money from TikTok for doing that. So what I'm saying is, even though you might be intrigued and maybe you don't like Donald Trump, do not go to his videos and watch them. Do not stitch them. Do not duet them. Because all you're doing is giving him more exposure and making him money. We don't want to do that. Now, in terms of how much money he could make on TikTok, it's minuscule by comparison to some of the things we've talked about. But the fact of the matter is he's hemorrhaging money and he wants to monetize in any way he can. He also wants to send his message to people he hasn't been able to convince. And that's the thing that Donald Trump has done all along. He's big on appeasing those people who already like him. He's big on going to those states where they're red and they are friendly. You don't see him going to blue states very often. You don't see him talking to crowds that are maybe um, up in the air or even negative toward him. He sticks with the base, which is fine, but that doesn't get you any more votes. That doesn't change people's minds. That doesn't convert people into voters, which is what he needs. So he'll be on TikTok. We'll hear about what's going on, but please don't interact with him. It's fake, and it's just going to benefit Donald Trump, and there's no reason to do that. So Donald Trump um, joined TikTok. (coughs) 
He posted his first video on the wildly popular social media app, one that he hoped to ban at one point. He's reaching out to younger voters as he seeks re-election in November. Trump posted a 13-second clip Saturday night that shows him um, in his usual blue suit and red tie attending an ultimate fighting championship bout in Newark, New Jersey. Yep, Donald Trump was attending the UFC, a fight there. Walking along with CEO Dana White, shaking hands with Joe Rogan. I don't know if these people understand it, but they are harming their their business by doing this. They may not think so now, but ultimately they're going to have to talk about how they befriended Donald Trump when he's an absolute criminal. They think they, uh, they're confident still that he has enough support that, uh, um, that they want to be his buddy. And let's be honest, the UFC, I don't know pretty much about, I don't know much about the demographics of the UFC, but uh, I'm guessing there's a lot of Trump humpers that are big UFC fans. Now in the video, which features raucous music, Trump is introduced by UFC CEO Dana White and leans into the camera saying, it's my honor. Dana, I don't know that I've ever had a lot of respect for you because I think you're a creepy, slimy piece of shit just by virtue of the business you're in and the way you do business. However, after suggesting that it's your honor to be in the presence of Donald Trump, I've lost any shred of respect for you and anybody that knows of Dana White should feel the same way. I mean, the guy just got convicted of 34 felonies and Dana White saying, here's my buddy. Trump greets people at the UFC arena and concludes the clip by saying, that was a good walk on, right? Yeah, of course it was, Donnie. As of midday Sunday, Trump already had 2 million followers on his account at Real Donald Trump. In April, President Joe Biden signed into law a bill that would ban TikTok in the United States if its Chinese owner, ByteDance, fails to find a buyer for the app within a year. It's not going to get banned. U.S. officials have expressed concern about the China's government uses, uh, uses TikTok to gather Americans' personal data for other nefarious purposes, you know, like Facebook and Instagram. The Biden campaign this year also joined TikTok, which has more than 170 million viewers in the United States. Now, while in power, Trump tried to ban TikTok on national security grounds with an executive order, but the drive got bogged down in the courts when a federal judge questioned how the move would affect free speech and block, by, block the initiative. Donald Trump wanted to shut down TikTok because too many people were talking about shit he didn't want to be talked about. Like right here, like with the rational boomer, like with Hawk, like with Tom Powell, like chasing Oz. Those people are talking about politics and giving the real facts as opposed to what Donald Trump and the Republicans would like you to hear. That gave them uh, a little burr in their saddle and they decided to try to ban it. It did not work that time. It will not work this time. Now, in early May, TikTok and ByteDance filed a legal challenge against the law that would ban the app. ByteDance has said that it has no plans to sell TikTok, leaving the lawsuit, which will likely go to the U.S. Supreme Court, as its only option to avoid a ban. But that will take a while, maybe a couple of years. <laughs> By then, of course, the Republicans will be out of power. And yes, I know Joe Biden signed off on banning TikTok, but I think it was just something he gave up on, knowing that it would never happen in order to get the funding for Ukraine. He gave something to get something, and the funding for Ukraine was far more important than TikTok at this point. All right, MSNBC legal analyst Neil Katyal predicted that the Supreme Court will not overturn the conviction against Donald Trump in the hush money trial, just as I mentioned earlier. Now, Neil Katyal is a former inspector general or solicitor general, and he's a very smart guy. I have a lot of respect for him. He's one of the few on television news that I have respect for. Now, earlier this week, 
Mike Johnson said during an interview on Fox News that he believes the justices will step in regarding the former president's conviction in Manhattan. Trump was convicted by a jury of 34 counts. And Katyal said, I think they're deeply concerned about that as we are. So I think they'll set this straight. I'm sorry, that's what Johnson said about the Supreme Court. Well, they can be concerned about it, but if they don't have authority, it doesn't matter. Now, during an interview with uh, Jen Psaki on Sunday, Katyal predicted that most of the justice would not rule in Trump's favor in order to return, in order to return the case. He says, I know that this is what Mike Johnson said. I know the justices personally, too. I have no stinking idea of what they might be thinking about this. And, you know, Trump has been, I think it's most important to point out, a dead loser in the Supreme Court. Every time that it comes up, I mean, eight to one on executive privilege with only Justice Thomas siding with him in the 2020 election rebuke lots of times. And here there is no I don't think that the United States Supreme Court sits to review state convictions generally. So, you know, maybe they'll find some federal issue here and maybe um, there will be an appeal that will get there. But I think it's tough. It's tough here, particularly because, Jen, the jury unanimously found Trump guilty and not just on one count, but for 34 separate criminal convictions that are felonies. And they did so under the legal standard. That is the hardest to prove. That's uh, difficult to prove for prosecutors and for the government, for government officials to prove in the system beyond a reasonable doubt. They did it unanimously with all 12. They ran the table as they had to do in our system. Very, very hard to overturn that. Very hard to see the United States Supreme Court getting involved despite what Speaker Johnson is insinuating. And as I've said before, you know, we hear them say a lot of things. We hear them make a lot of threats, but none of them come through. They fail on every one of them. So this is not something we should be concerned about. Even if there was some concern, it's years down the road before they can do it. And by that time, everything has changed. The support for Donald Trump, the position of Donald Trump, the uh, condition of the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate, where the Republicans will have no more control. So... This, this isn't something we really need to worry about at this point. Now, we know Donald Trump is a cold-ass liar. He lies every time he opens up his mouth. And he said something really uh, lately that is really easy to prove that he's lying. Donald Trump says he never called for Hillary Clinton to be arrested, tried, and jailed, despite publicly pleading to lock her up multiple times over the year. Now, during an interview on Fox & Friends Weekend Edition on Sunday, the former president acted like he had nothing to do with the calls to imprison Clinton, calls that were so common during his 2016 run for the Oval Office. Now, Fox News host Will Kane said, you famously said regarding Hillary Clinton, lock her up. You declined to do that as president. And what he was trying to do is make Donald Trump look merciful, as if Judge Marchand and Joe Biden should be merciful on Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump should have just accepted that. Yeah, I did say that. But when it came down to that, I saved her. But that's not what he did. Of course, it's not what he did. Donald Trump is not smart enough to take an opportunity. Now, he's been found guilty on 34 felony accounts, as we know. Trump brazenly lied about chance aimed at his one-time rival. Trump said, I beat her. It's easier when you win. They always said, lock her up, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. See, he's trying to get some sympathy here. Well, he couldn't have locked her up because there never was any fucking evidence. Unlike Donald Trump, she stood and took testimony for 11 hours. Donald Trump couldn't even testify in his own fucking criminal case. And now he continues and says, and then this happened to me, so I may feel differently about it, he went on. I can't tell you. I'm not sure I can answer that question. 
Shifting the blame to his supporters, Trump added, Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up, but the people would all say lock her up, lock her up, okay. Then we won, and I said pretty openly, I say, all right, come on, just relax, let's go. We got to make our country great. Yeah, that's what he said. The Republican's claim was easy to debunk, however. He repeatedly invoked lock her up cries during his 2016 run for president. At the time, even said he would appoint a special prosecutor to look into accusations Clinton improperly used private email. But he didn't. He never did that. And there's a good reason why he didn't do that is because there was no evidence. Now, while Trump did soften his stance a bit after securing his 2016 presidential win, telling supporters they owe Clinton a major debt of gratitude for his service to our country, by 2020, he was back to his old shtick. Responding to chants of lock her up at a rally in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania that September, he told followers, I agree. Donald Trump says he didn't do it, but of course he did. Though Trump has now been convicted of nearly three dozen felonies, it's still unclear if he will face any jail time for his crimes, and I think he will. It may not be a long term, but I think they will put him in lockup just to make a point. New York Supreme Court Justice Juan Marchand has scheduled the politician's sentencing for July 11th. Of course, that's just four days before the Republican National Convention. So we do have something to look forward to. Just about a month and a half away, we will find out Donald Trump's lot in life, what they're going to do to him. He is going to be punished. I get people telling me all the time, well, he'll just get off. They won't do anything to them. That's not true. How do you get convicted of 34 felonies, and not get some kind of punishment? Maybe it's a house lockdown. Maybe it's probation. Maybe it's jail time. Maybe mixed in with all of that, it's a fine. He's going to get punished, and it's not going to be pleasant because Donald Trump was not pleasant to the judge, and that is the one person that's going to determine what his penalty is. And since he's already found out that Donald Trump doesn't behave and doesn't listen to directions from a judge, that's going to come into play. And Judge Juan Marchand is a serious motherfucking judge, and he's also had enough of Donald Trump. So if you think he's going to go easy on Donald Trump, please, you know better than that. That's not going to happen. He's going to get some punishment, and it's not going to be pleasant for Donald Trump. So we'll see what happens. Donald Trump did say, um, uh, we can't say that nothing's going to happen. That would be ridiculous. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Now, there's been a lot of talk um, on Fox News about this. And, of course, they support Donald Trump. Um, we remember Stephen Miller. Yeah, Stephen Miller, that creepy son of a bitch. He was on Fox News. Um, while... Judge Marchand has set up the uh, sentencing for July 11th. Stephen Miller is all upset about it. His panties are in a bunch. <laughs> and I'm seriously suggesting I think the guy wears panties. I don't know. It's just something about that fucking ridiculous looking face. Anyway, he says, we can't just sit back and say, oh, I hope everything corrects itself, Miller said. You have to get in the game, Republicans. I want every secretary of state. Uh, are you purging your voting rolls of non-citizens right now? He continued, is every Republican state AG opening investigations into voter fraud right now? Is every House committee controlled by Republicans using its subpoena power in every way it needs to right now? Is every Republican DA starting every investigation they need to right now? Is every donor off the sidelines and in the game? The big dollar guys, the rich guys, the wealthy guys. Miller said every facet of the Republican Party in power has to be used right now to go toe to toe with Marxism and beat these communists. That's the task, Jesse. Yeah. That's how it's going to work, Stephen. 
Stephen, I kind of keep a low profile because I have a feeling you might be in the mix for some of these superseding indictments when Jack Smith comes out with this January 6th thing. The remarks from Miller, one of the architects of the Heritage Foundation-led Project 2025 blueprint for Trump's second term. Everybody wants to talk about 2025, Project 2025. Well, he is one of the architects of it, and he's an idiot. Um, and everybody's worried about it, but as I've said many times before, the only time you have to worry about it is if you fucking elect Donald Trump as president. And even then, they aren't very good at following through with things. But the point is, it's it's very easy here. Just don't elect the motherfucker. I don't see a path for Donald Trump to win the election in November. And if everybody gets out and vote, he won't. And if he doesn't get elected, we don't have to worry about Project 2025. I feel like people want to talk about Project 2025 in order to scare Democrats to make sure they get out and vote. I think that's insulting to Democrats. I don't think you need to do that. I think they already know what the task at hand is, and they are ready, and they will show up much like they did in 2020, except even more so in 2024, because people are already scared at the prospect of Donald Trump becoming president and what might happen to this country. We don't need to scare them anymore. We don't need to cause more stress. We need to just encourage people, show them what the facts are, show them why they need to vote Democrat, and we just get this motherfucker done. Now, last year, Trump declared that if he retakes the White House, he'll appoint a real special prosecutor to go after Joe Biden, calling him the most corrupt president in the history of the USA. But again, We've had Congress investigate him over and over again, talking about impeaching him. And there's no evidence. Much like there was the case with uh, Hillary Clinton, no evidence, none at all. So Donald Trump can talk all he wants, even if he did become president, still not much he can do. But again, he's not going to be president. There is no way. And I'm still suggesting that he may not even be the nominee. You can see how he looks now. You can see how he sounds now. This is all taking a heavy toll on him. I heard he did a, uh, a interview on Fox News. Maybe and we might even be talking about that in a minute. But on Fox News, he was just unhinged. And the interesting thing about that Fox News interview is it was heavily edited question is, what did they edit out? He sounded unhinged in the uh, interview. And then you take a look at all the edits they, they, they did in this particular situation. And you have to wonder what they cut out. They were clearly trying to make Donald Trump look good. And why didn't they do the interview live? Because they needed to clean it up. And if that is the case, if he can't sit there and carry on an interview live, Without making a fool of himself, how is he going to debate Joe Biden in uh, in less than a month? That's the next thing. Is he going to show up? My guess is no. He'll come up with some crazy excuse or some crazy threat. Tell us that Joe Biden's on drugs or something, and he won't show up. But if he does show up, it's going to be entertaining as a motherfucker. Now, people are asking Donald Trump, what about if you're sent to jail? And Trump said he would be okay with being sentenced to either house arrest or jail time after he was convicted last week on 34 felony counts in New York. Oh, you'd be okay with that. I beg to differ. you never been to jail, motherfucker. Go to jail for one day and you'll be losing your shit literally and figuratively. When asked on Fox News' uh, Fox and Friends how he deals with the prospect of being sentenced to house arrest or jail, Trump said, I'm okay with it. Yeah, of course, that's what you would say. Wait till they put you in an orange jumpsuit, handcuff your ass, and drag you off to jail and put you in a jail cell by yourself for hours on end, you ADD motherfucker. You will go nuts. If Donald Trump goes into jail for three days or three months, he will come out a different person. He won't be a better person, but he'll be a different, weaker person. 
<laughs> especially when he knows he's got three more trials that could put him in jail too. Only thing worse than going into jail is waiting to go back. Donald Trump went on to say this, but if I go to jail, I'm not sure the public would stand for it. I think it'd be tough for the public to take a certain point. There's a breaking point. I mentioned this earlier. And what Donald Trump is talking about is trying to incite people to fight back for him. But it hasn't been working as of late. As I've said, nobody showed up at court when he was indicted. Nobody showed up in court when he was prosecuted. And nobody showed up at court when he was convicted. He was yelling and screaming and hoping people would come out at those points, but they didn't. As I've said, most of the crazy mean ones are already in fucking jail or on probation and wouldn't dare do it again. What's left is a bunch of clowns and red hats and clown cars that don't know what the fuck to do but cry when he gets convicted. That's what they were doing. They were out there crying. These alleged tough people were out there crying and praying because their Lord and Savior had been convicted. One said, just like Jesus, Jesus was, was convicted unfairly. Please. Now, of course, we know 34 counts of falsifying business records. He's slated to be sentenced on July 11th. The Republican National Convention in Milwaukee is just three days later. Trump's legal team has vowed to appeal the case, but proceedings are currently expected to move forward as scheduled. Well, whether he's going to appeal it or not, that doesn't stop the sentencing. He's convicted. He will be sentenced. Then he can try to appeal it, but it's going to take a long time to go through that process. Certainly longer than the convention and certainly longer than the election. So he'll be dealing with this for a couple, three years. Now, they say as a first-time offender of falsifying business records, Trump will likely not face jail time, especially given he has no previous criminal record. He's more likely to face a lesser punishment, such as a fine. I beg to differ. As I've said before, there are other factors. We're taking people who are making predictions on what is going to happen based on what they know of history. But what we know of history is that we've never seen anything like this before. A former president who shows no remorse, who shows that he would do it again, who's constantly railed on the judge who's going to make the decision on how he's punished. I'll be surprised if he doesn't do some jail time. It may not be a long time, but it doesn't need to be. He will be fined. He may be on probate. He will be on probation either way. Uh, so these people saying, oh, he'll never do jail time. You're not paying attention. You're not looking at all that's happened. Now, Trump told Fox and Friends he advised his lawyers not to beg for anything, noting it's just the way it is. He also opened up about the impact the conviction has had on his family and those around him. I think in many ways it's tougher on them than it is on me. <laughs> Donald Trump, nobody, nobody counts but you. You're the first one to say it. They're good people, all of them. Everyone, everyone, he said. He goes on to say, I have a wonderful wife who has to listen to this stuff all the time. They do that for this reason. They do that. All these salacious names they put in of these people, and I'm not even allowed to defend myself because of the gag order. Think of it, Trump said, without specifying who they is. But they put this stuff in to create havoc. These are bad people. I know everything they're doing. I know every move they make. I get it. He later said former First Lady Melania Trump is fine while noting it is very hard for her amid the coverage of the trial and conviction. Do you think she gives a fuck about you? I don't think so. I do not think so. But when you are punished appropriately, we'll see how everybody feels at that point. One last thing I wanted to bring up, and this is just illustrates how pathetic the Republicans are. They continually do the same things over and over, and they continually fail. Representative Jim Jordan, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, has asked Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg and other top prosecutors to testify over Donald Trump's prosecution. In letters sent on Friday to Bragg and Matthew Colangelo, 
senior counsel to the DA's office, Jordan called on the prosecutors to testify before the select subcommittee on the weaponization of federal government on June 13th. This hearing will examine actions by state and local prosecutors to engage politically motivated prosecutions of federal officials, and particularly the recent political prosecution of uh, President Donald Trump. Jordan's request for their testimony the day after Trump's guilty verdict is part of a push by Republicans to discredit the hush money prosecution. What's the point? It's over. You think you're going to bring Alvin Bragg in, shame him, and then he'll go back and say, you know, let's just start over. Let's let let's not call him guilty anymore. We'll change it. You're right. I, I'm stupid. That's not going to happen. Alvin Bragg won't show up. He didn't show up last time they asked him to show up. He won't show up this time. And even if he did, it would do no good. This is all performance art for these motherfuckers. They want to try to bring him in there and try to make him look bad. But every time they try to do that, they fail. They're talking about a politically motivated or a weaponized uh, government against somebody. And they're talking about Donald Trump. Donald Trump actually committed these crimes and it was proven in his convictions. You want to really know what a politically motivated trial is? a weaponization of the DOJ. You want to know what that is? That's Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden committed crimes. I'll acknowledge that. He cut a deal with the DA. It was over and done. Up until Congress decided to do further investigations, they didn't like that he cut a deal. So they stirred this up more and they forced the DOJ and a special counsel to indict him in spite of the fact that they had a deal. Now Hunter Biden is going on trial this week, I believe, starting today. That's what you call politically motivated trial. That's what you call weaponization of the government. Not what happened to Donald Trump. Donald Trump did the crimes. He was found to, to be guilty, and now he has to pay the price. No matter what Congress, Jim Jordan, or anybody says or does, it's not going to change that. And bringing Alvin Bragg in to talk to him isn't going to help. All it does is some kind of show they can put on to make it look like they're doing something and try to make Alvin Bragg look bad. Say, so see, it wasn't a real trial. But I got news for you, Jimmy boy. Alvin Bragg ain't coming. Fonnie Willis ain't coming. Nobody's coming. They never came before. They're not going to come this time. So fuck yourself. All right. We are going to wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day. Hope you have a great day, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.